Hey kids and cadets, it is time for another episode of STFA TV. Today we are doing the cowboy boot bag. Yeehaw! And as always, I print my stitch, the, the who, English much? No. Um, I print my stitch sheet first and make my notes on it. Um, you should also have a how-to PDF that has all of the measurements. We are doing the five by seven zip bag. So what are you gonna need? If you're doing a different size, check the how-to PDF um, for the sizes of the fabrics and pieces you're gonna need. For a five by seven, we are gonna need three pieces of outer fabric, because this is an outer, uh, fully lined outer cloth bag with a vinyl, but this time I'm using faux suede, because it's cowboy boot, um, applique. So, and because I'm extra, and you know, it's cowboy boot, you gotta. I am using a bandana. Ha ha! I know. Is that just not? <laughs> That's so Texas, let me tell you. All right, so what you are going to need to do is, with any of your exterior fabrics, you are going to need to iron some iron on medium weight inter uh, <laughs> um, interfacing, iron on interfacing, SF 101. Jane over at New Moon's got some imitation stuff that's cheaper and very good. It's just as awesome. So I have already cut my pieces, interfaced them. For the back of the bag, there is no fold overs or unders that you have to worry about. For the front of the bag, the, oh, I'm sorry, I guess, the back of the bag is six by eight interfaced. The front of the bag, there's two pieces. One is six inches wide by one and a half inches with a half an inch ironed under to give you that nice, nice good lip. Um, and the other one is six wide by seven and a quarter with a half inch doo -doo -doo, um, ironed under to give you that nice little lip. You're gonna need lining pieces for your lining. One piece at six and a half by eight and a half, and I don't interface my lining. Oh, and because I'm just so extra, the, ba the bandana is the outer part of the bag. The inner part's gonna be fake denim, cause you know, yeehaw. <laughs> Love ya. All right, um, this piece is the back lining at six and a half by eight and a half. Then you're gonna need two more pieces. One is six and a half wide by seven and a half tall with a half inch under, um, ironed under. And the other one is six and a half wide by two inches with a half inch ironed under, okay? That two inches and seven and a half inches is the measurement before I iron, okay? Once I iron, it's like one and a half inches and seven inches. You'll also need some vinyl. Um, and in your, um, in your zip file, you'll find the alternate colors. This boot's gonna be brown. Um, but if you wanna do a black boot or a red boot or a gray boot, they're in the PDF, or not in the PDF, in the zip file, there is one called alternate colors. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna do different colors and I'll tell you your thread colors. Um, you are also gonna need one zipper. That's approximately eight to nine inches. This one is hella big, <laughs> oops. Um, but it matched my bandana, so we're going with it. You'll need uh, four pieces of ribby ribbon. Two pieces are five eighths inch by three inch, and two of them are one inch wide by two inches long. Remember, I do that weird little ribby ribbon trick on the zipper to make it look more finished and polished and keep the zipper ends from popping out of the seam. And you will need two D-rings or lobster claws, and I went and rated my Irid because it goes so well. I know, I'm just special. All right, so we're gonna hoop up our medium weight cutaway and we are gonna throw it in the machine and you are gonna run color stop one. Go run color stop one and come back and see me. Oh, look, there's color stop one. I know, I'm cheating. Don't you, <laughs> I know. Oh, the other material that you need for this that I forgot to tell you about if you've never done an STFA in the heat project before, then you are unaware of my addiction to tape. Tapey tape. <sighs> All right, so grab your tapey tape, grab your zipper, which you have now trimmed down to the appropriate size. You want to um, one inch zipper tape. Um, standard number three uh, zippers come with one inch zipper tape. You wanna line it up so that this very bottom line right here 
and the second down line are covered by your zipper tape. Now, if you have um, number five zipper, you can use this same pattern without editing anything. The difference is, see this middle line right here? That has got to be on the very left and very right side of your um, zipper teeth. So you have to be super massively careful about lining up if you are using a number five zipper. You can use a number five zipper. You can use that sexy, fancy, all, um, all kinds of um, exciting and different zipper tape with um, a zipper pull you load yourself. You just have to be even more special and careful and OCD when lining up your zipper tape and zippers so that your zipper teeth are right smack dab in the middle of that center rectangle. If you're using a number three, you can be a little more freewheeling. So I'm gonna tape that down and then you're gonna throw it back in the machine. You're gonna run color stop two. We will be back after color stop two. Okie dokie pokey. so color stop two tacked down our zipper. Now we've got some work to do. I want you to grab a marking utensil and your two two inch by one inch ribbons and I want you to fold them in half so the raw ends are together and then I want you to mark please and thank you one half inch and one half inch we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other piece One half inch. And one half inch. Now we are going to grab our two front pieces of fabric that have our fold overs. And we are going to pull this in and we are going to grab one of our pieces of tape, or not, uh, ribbon. And we're gonna make sure that the marks that we just made, right there and right there, line up um, with the outer edge of the whole bag die line and we are centered on top of our zipper tape which is a, about one inch and we are going to lightly tape that in place like so okay I lied not lightly we're gonna tape that all the way down hurricane proof it all right then we're gonna come over here we're gonna fold this fold goes to the inside raw edges to the outside we're gonna line up our two little marks with the die lines on our bag, and we're gonna center it across the zipper. And we're gonna tape some tape, and we're gonna tape it down again. Okay. Now, we are going to take our bottom piece, this one right here, and we are going to buck the fold up against the teeth, okay? And we're gonna make sure that we are left, right, centered, like so. Then we're gonna take the top and we are going to buck it up against the teeth and we're gonna make sure we are left, right, centered, like so. And we're gonna tape that bad boy down too, like this. And then we're gonna come over here making sure that we are still all even and parallel and straight and everything is good. And we're gonna tape down over here too. I swear, right? Now throw it in the machine and run color stop three. Um, and yeah, run color stop three. Okie dokie kiddos, we ran color stop number three that tacked down all of our bottom fabric and part of our top fabric. You'll notice it did not go all the way over. Don't worry about that. We'll catch that towards the end. We need to leave the zipper here so it doesn't catch on your needle head as it's moving around. But before the end of the bag, we'll move that in and catch that last little bit. So don't sweat it, guys. All right, right now I want you to run four, five, and six. That's gonna do the sole of your boot. Four, five, and six is gonna do the sole of your boot. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then come back and see me between six and seven, okay? Four, five, and six, see you between six and seven. Okay, so we are now at the first place where we need to do something. Um, you want to cut a strip of your vinyl, faux leather, faux suede, whatever you're gonna use, a half an inch wide 
and about, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, about three inches long. Okay, half inch wide, three inches long. Half inch wide, three inches long. Then you're gonna take it and you're gonna put it pretty side down. See this little die line right here? You want to cover it and extend down about a quarter of an inch. You don't need a whole bunch. And we're gonna put a little piece of tape to hold it in place, just like so. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna put another piece of tape, hold it in place up here. Throw it in your machine and go ahead and run Color Stop, blah. I believe that's Color Stop 7. And then run Color Stop 8. Come back to me after 7 and 8. Da -da -da, 7 and 8. See you after 8. Oh, so we got two things going on for us right now. We've got, um, looks like a needle is being fussy on me. Um, we have got doo -doo -doo, um, to t pull up the tape, but we need to put down our next applique piece. And our next applique piece needs to be somewhere in the neighborhood of da -da -da, three and a half inches wide by five inches long. No, that's not going to work. Yes, that shall work. So you're just going to lay that over to make sure you're covering the entire upper boot. We're doing it in two different pieces in case you've got directional vinyl so that we can do it this way and then this way or what have you. And we're going to just tape it down just a tiny bit just so that it doesn't shift or move while it's doing our zigzag. And then go ahead and do color stop nine. And I will be back after nine to help you trim out. And there we go. So we got that all tacked down. It's time to trim it. Yes, it is. So we're gonna pull up our four little tapey tapes, but don't throw them away. You'll need them here in a minute. We're gonna trim that little, yeah, right there. Now, the key to trimming is super sharp scissors. Mm -hmm. Applique duckbill scissors. Mm -hmm. And what you have to play to find the angle that's best for you. And once you get really practiced at this, you'll be able to just slide these scissors along without going snippy, snippy, snippy. And do, 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 you'll be able to get right up against that stitch line without cutting the stitch line. It has to do with the angle of the scissors and the angle you can cut at. That's why I move my hoop, not my scissors. There we go. Now we're gonna throw it back in the machine and you're gonna run color stop 10. And that's gonna give you the die line for the bottom part of the boob. So I will see you after 10. Okie pokies, do you see that die line there? You see it? Okay, so you're gonna need a, a piece of applique that's about five and a half by, meh, five and a half by three and a quarter is what I've got in my notes. So we are going to take it and we're gonna make sure we're covering the entire bottom part of the boot. And those tapey tapes you just took up, Put them right back down. Yes, sir, Bob. And then we're gonna put it in the machine and we are going to run color stop 11. So I'll see you between 11 and 12. How quick and easy that was. So peel up your tapes. Doo -doo -doo. It would help if I had some fingernails, wouldn't it? And go ahead and grab your applique scissors. And we are gonna carefully cut this dubahitchi out. And then, once we get this trimmed, you are gonna be able to run all of colors 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 without me. You will not get to hear my lovely voice until after 16, but before 17. So we're gonna cut, 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 boom. Boom. Twisty turny. Do, do, do. Twisty turny. All right, so we got this bad boy all cut out. Yay! Yay! Yes, it's coming along. Go ahead and run color stops 12 through 16 inclusive, and I will see you between 16 and 17. Okay, kiddos and cadets, look at this. We're almost done. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we are between color stop uh, 16 and 17. We are going to pull this up. And we are going to fold this down, but you want to leave a little slack. You don't want to pull it tight because the whole 
cool thing about this is it's supposed to look a little 3D like the belt loop or the boot loops at the top of your boots. So you want to put a little, don't put a whole bunch because, you know, then that's just weird. But go ahead and put a little bit. There you go. A little bit of a slide up so you got a little bit of loop there. Um, put a piece of tape here. And then so that your needle head doesn't catch on this, we're going to go ahead and pull it tight this way. We want to make sure that we are nice and straight. There we go. So we're going to put a piece. Ah, too many pieces of tape. There we go. There and there. Go ahead and run color stop 17 and come back to me after 17, okay? Okay, we just ran 17. We're going to tear up that tape. We're going to leave the top one down so that that stays smushied. And we're going to trim close to that um, bean stitch right there. Go ahead and run color stop 19 and we will be back between 19 and 20. All right, color stop 20. We're gonna start working our back lining. So the first thing we're gonna do is I put this piece of tape too high. I'm gonna move it back down here a little bit. We're gonna peel up all the side tape and we are going to, come here, set them aside. Do, do, do. And I'm gonna, my ribby ribbon started to unravel. Yep. And we're gonna pull up these side tapes too. How about that? Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. And I'm unraveling again. I didn't hit them with a lighter. I probably should have. Okay, we're gonna open our zipper. Do, do, do. We're gonna take a seam ripper and we're going to put a little tear to start things. We're gonna flip this over and we're only gonna cut away the central part underneath the zipper. So you'll notice there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. See the seven lines? You want to come down one, two, three, and you want to cut between the four line and the five line. All right, see right there? Four line and five line. We're gonna cut that rectangle out, cut right on the stitches, only cut the stabilizer. Do not cut um, your zipper. We're gonna go all the way to the end of the bag. We're gonna come up. Don't cut your zipper. Go slow. Be careful. Pay attention. And we're gonna go along the four line all the way to the edge of the zipper. And then we're gonna come down and take out that last little bit. There we go. Now, Open, close, open, close, open, close. We're going to flip back over. We're going to close our zipper. We're going to put everything back where it belongs. We're going to put down a piece of insurance tape. We don't necessarily have to have it there, but I like it there. And then we're going to flip back over, back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to grab our bottom piece of front lining, the one that is da -da -da, six and a half wide by seven and a half long with a half inch fold. We're going to put the ugly side towards the stabilizer and we're going to line. Okay. That's a janky little line right there, but we're going to line it up as best as we can on that line right there. That's where we want to be. Now you can do a four corner tack, but my machine hates me and it loves to grabby grab. So I always on mine run a whole line of tape all the way down the left and right side when I'm doing this fabric lining. Put it in the machine and go ahead and run color stop 19. We'll come back for 20. We'll come back for 20 to do the top lining. See you between 19 and 20. Hey guys, there we go. The bottom part of our lining is tacked down right there. Now we need to attach the top part in the same dealio spaghettio. We are gonna take the top lining and that jaggy little cut that I just did, we are going to line it up Make sure that we're centered left and right. We're gonna tape it down and we are going to throw it back in the machine and run color stop 20. It is not going to sew, unlike the bottom piece that sewed all the way across, top piece is gonna stop right here so that we can open the zipper. So run 20 and then come right back so that we can do some more stuff for 21. Okay, super quick, right? So see, it only tacked about half of it. We're gonna go ahead and flip to this side, pull up our tape, 
pull our ribbon out of the way. Oh, it just barely caught my ribbon. My spacing was off. I'm gonna have to fix that so that it, you guys don't have that problem. Let me make a note of that. Fix. Problem. There we go. All right, we're gonna open our zipper. And it may have been a placement problem on my partner. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And we're gonna put everything back the way it goes. And now we are gonna run Color Stop 21, which is not only gonna finish this, but it's gonna give us a tack lines for our side lobster claw ribbon assembly or our top. So go ahead and run Color Stop 21. We will be back after 21. All right, so our back lining is all tacked down. Well, part one of lining is tacked down. Now we need to do our lobster claw and D-rings. So I am going to take my um, three inches of ribby ribbon and fish them through my lobster claws. I'm gonna do a top attach on this. Usually on the five by sevens, I do a side attach, but I'm feeling topish today. So you wanna leave, the way I'm doing these guys is I'm lining up the top bar on the lobster claw with the bottom of the zipper to make sure that my alignment's perfect on both sides. And also, I'm making sure that on the die line, I'm, da I'm smack dab in the middle. So I am going to grab some tape and tape down my metal bits and make sure that I am out of my stitch path. That is very important. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna tape down the top and I'm gonna grab this one and I am going to do the same exact thing. I'm gonna kinda sorta use the top of the zipper and you'll notice my D-ring, my lobster claw wants to stick out a little bit. I'm going to have to, um, you know what, just to make sure that we do not hit that stitch thing I'm gonna tape this here, and then I'm gonna swing that all the way over to guarantee it's out of the way. And I'm gonna tape up here to hold it in place, and I'm gonna go back, because I'm not, now I'm not trusting that. I am gonna go ahead and tape there, and then I'm gonna swing this bad boy all the way out of the way. Just to make sure, guys. It looks like it'll clear, but I am extra paranoid extra paranoid about metal. So go ahead and run color stop. Go ahead and run color stop, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> color stop 22 to tack those down and we will be back for 23. All right, kids and cadets, the next step is to take up some of this tape because we're not gonna need all of that anymore. We're gonna leave all of this here just to make sure that our metal stays out of our way. And then we are going to take our back and put it on the front, pretty side down. And we are going to make sure that we are covering left, right, top, and bottom die lines. And we are. All right, now we're gonna take four pieces of tape and we're gonna take the four corners just to hold it in place. And we are going to run color stop 23. Almost there guys, almost there. So run 23 and then we'll be back for the last couple of steps. Oh. So we've got this part done. We're last piece of attachment. We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna put the last piece of lining on and you wanna put it pretty side to pretty side. Okay, and you wanna line it up top, bottom, and center. Make sure you're covering the whole thing. And then you can just take this tape up and put it right back down. Same here, take this tape up and put it right back down. Just holding this last piece of lining on the back. Throw it in the machine and run 24. Do not run 25. 25 is a dead stop to keep your needle head from moving over this 
and ripping the whole thing out of the hoop. Only run 24. Only run 24 and we will be back after 24. Hi O, oh, cheery O. Oh. We are done with the machine stitching part of our adventure. So let's go ahead and we're going to, while it's still in the hoop, I'm going to trim back the zipper to about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same exact thing, about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I am going to pull up these tapes. Ooh, you! I chose the wrong kind of fabric for that, didn't I? Now I'm going to, on both pieces, both pieces of back lining, I am going to go ahead and cut right where, oops, I guess I need to be in frame. I'm gonna cut right here where the stitching is. I'm making my tourney tab. So, A, we have this hole where we need to turn the whole bag, but also when we're done turning the whole bag, we will be able to stitch it closed so nobody sees it. There we go. All right, so I'm all prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna pop this bad boy out of the hoop. There you go. I'm gonna do some preliminary cut down so that I'm not trying to manhandle 400 yards of fabric. Y'all, roar. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of this. Now I'm gonna take my pinking shears, and like I showed you on the back, this fabric's starting to fray already. Pinking shears will contro uh, control that. If you don't have pinking shears, no big. Um, and I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch away from the stitch line, all the way around. Yeah, come here. I'm gonna try to make it nice looking, but apparently not. And you're gonna have a little trouble going over that zipper tape. But once you get past that, it'll be fine. Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna come closer to this curve down here so I don't have a wad of fabric in the corner, making it look all bulky and janky and stuff. Come back up. Oh, hello. Doo -doo -doo. And voila, I am gonna take my good scissors and I'm gonna come a little close on those corners. You don't wanna come too close cause you don't wanna jeopardize those um, stitches in the corners coming loose or pulling loose. But you also wanna cut down the amount of bulk you've got in those corners. We're gonna get rid of all of this stuff by throwing it on the floor and then I'm gonna get yelled at by myself later for being a mess. And we are gonna take this piece of tape off and we are going to turn so that the lining is completely on the outside of the bag. You wanna go slow, you wanna go careful, you don't yank. Twisting's okay. But if you yank, you might jeopardize popping a stitch, pull on the wrong thing the wrong way, etc. You just carefully want to feed it through, piece at a time, it's okay. It will all eventually go through, trust me. I saw somebody refer to this as birthing a bag and oh my God. Okay, we're there, we're there. Gotta get those top corners to flip, come on. And now we're gonna poke those top corners down in. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm gonna move this camera back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I can see what I'm doing. So we know what I'm doing. Okay, now I've completely turned the lining all the way inside out. Now I'm going to reach my fingers inside the zipper hole and I'm gonna pull out, remember all that tape we left? That's just gonna cause us problems, so go ahead and, oh! Find as much tape as you can. And we, Houston, we have a problem. Apparently, the tape really liked to stick to my uh, faux suede. 
So I'm going to have to find uh, a marker that matches my faux suede and cover up what I just oogled. All right, now we're going to do the other way. We are going to turn the whole bag inside out. Grab, start at the corner, start tugging. And I'm going to come all the way down here and turn that way and that way and that way. It's like wet pantyhose. Does anybody ever wear pantyhose anymore or are they dead? Is that one of those things that is just gone? All right, now we need to get some pokey bits. And I'm going to grab my crochet hook. And I am going to come down here and poke this corner. Oops, see? And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to poke this corner gently. I'm applying firm pressure, but I'm not stabbing through the fabric. We're going to come up here. We're going to do the same thing. We need to turn that corner outwards. We need to turn this corner outwards too. Come here. It doesn't want to turn outwards. It's like, no, I hate you. You're not my real mom. There you go. There you go. Now, before we're all said and done on this, we have some bag surgery to do. These two little um, tabs, turn them both to the inside of the hole. Actually, I guess I probably should have left it turned like this so you could see it better. And now, see how the fold lines right up with that stitching? We're gonna take a needle and thread. Oh, the old fashioned way. And we are going to sew carefully, only grabbing the two pieces of lining. Don't go all the way through to the bag. We're gonna sew this shut with quick whip stitch. And Kel does this hidden ladder stitch, which is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Um, and I'm jealous of her hand sewing skills like that. But then again, this is the crazy woman that sits there and beads a Elizabethan doll costume with 900 beads. Seed pearls, I'm sorry, seed pearls. Um, so clearly there is a difference between her crazy and my crazy. Um, I'm not entirely certain what my crazy is, but I know her crazy is perfectionism. So um, while I love her, um, sometimes, girl, you just got to let go. This is in the upper lining at the fold, at the top of the bag on the inside. Nobody ever going to, I applaud you. I'm not giving you crap. I just don't have that kind of patience. Also, once again, it's late on a Saturday and I'm hungry. <laughs> Girlfriend wants to eat. So we are not taking our time and doing, we're doing a whip stitch. We're going to close this hole. We're going to zip this up. I'm going to go find a marker to color in where the tape ripped off my suede. So, yeah, guys, you might want to tape test whatever you're going to use for your applique because obviously I screwed that up. Da -da -da. Yes, I know. You're looking at it going Frankenstein could have done a better stitch on his monster. I'm going to tie that off. Snip that off. Did not mean to throw my needle all the way across the table. We're going to tuck that back up where it belongs. And here, and we're going to roll our seams. And if, uh, because this is an all cloth bag, you can take an iron to it. Just watch your vinyl. You don't want to iron your vinyl. But the fabric itself, you can get those creases down good. You don't have to stack books on it. You can just run an iron across it. And my this is supposed to look way better than it does because I ripped off half the vinyl. All right. And there will be, I'm crooked. There, there we go. Um, there will be a dangle to go with this. I'm thinking it's going to be a cowboy hat. Yeehaw. Um, we will see. But get along, little doggie.